Hello, my friends. My name is Gene Arnold, and thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Regular Guy Mountain Biking. In this video, we'll be doing a product review and checking out the Magic Shine Ray 2600 Bike Light. So let's start this review off by first just taking a look at the product in general and kind of going over the build quality and things like that. How uh, comes in a full aluminum case, very, very sturdy. You know, when, when you kind of hold the light in your hand, it feels good, right? It feels solid. doesn't feel like you bought a, a cheap piece of plastic type of thing. In the front, it's got two different lenses. Okay. So we'll talk about how that works later on, but there are two LEDs. Uh, each one is behind a different style lens. Okay. You can take a look at that over there, right? Different types of lenses on the top of the light, there is a uh, control, let's call it a control center, okay? It has uh, two buttons, uh, up and down, uh, and then there's a little sensor in the middle that again, we'll also cover later on. In the back, it's a USB-C style charger, okay? It uses a USB-C style plug to charge up the device. And on the bottom, there is a, a Garmin style uh, twist lock. Okay, so it's got a Garmin style twist lock that you would use to mount this to whatever the device you're mounting it to. Again, we'll cover that in a little while in the video. But overall, it is definitely a solid uh, device. It feels good. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't feel cheap. And I think if, you know, if you were holding it, you'd be like, okay, I understand why this didn't cost $25. I understand why it was more expensive. I, I did buy a higher quality bike light. So now let's talk about some of the features that come with the, uh, the Ray 2600. Uh, it's going to be important that I make sure I, I say this up front. I'm reviewing this light and its features from the point of view of a mountain biker. Okay, some of the features that this light provides are very much focused towards a commuter. Okay, so I'm going to cover some features, but I'll be honest, some of them really aren't terribly applicable to mountain biking, so it doesn't make them a bad feature. They're just not a feature that I would use for the type of riding that I'm using this light for. So let's talk about some of the features right now in this light. The first one we're going to talk about will be the different light modes that this light can be in. All right. If you hold the two buttons, the top and bottom buttons down at the same time, you'll go into the mode selection uh, mode. Okay. Um, if you click it up, notice the lights not blinking like what wasn't blinking before. But I'll show you if I go down, the lights blinking. This is in standard mode. If you go up, the light is now in uh, smart mode. And then if you hold the two buttons again, you come out of that mode and you're in regular, let's go use the light mode. Let me explain to you what that all means. When you're in smart mode, what the light does is it will stay in a particular mode. Um, this is really more for, again, for commuting, okay? Not really a mountain biking feature. It'll be in the mode that you set in. But remember how I said there's a control center up here, okay? In between the two buttons is a light sensor uh, area, and it'll detect if it's light out or not. So it's kind of designed to, like if you're riding your bicycle commuting and you go in a tunnel, it'll automatically go bright and then it'll, it'll go low. Um, again, I don't see that very applicable for mountain biking. I'm in the woods, I'm riding at night. I don't, there's not gonna be a tunnel, okay? So cool feature. But that's what the mode does. It'll be in a mode that'll allow it to go brighter when it needs to or not as bright. The other thing it happens to do when you're in this smart mode is that if the light is, it has like a little vibration sensor in it. If the light isn't moving or doesn't vibrate for three minutes, it'll turn off. Okay, that's a pretty cool feature for your commuter. Let's say you're using this light for more of like a day runner light, okay? You're, you're going to work early in the morning. It's a just, you know, sunrise type of thing. And it's not, you know, just, you don't really see the light. You're, you, you're just using it for cars to see you, more, more for protection. So you take the, the bike, you go put it on the side of the, the building, you go and get a cup of coffee and you forget the lights on because you really don't see it. You're just using it for people to see you. Um, in three minutes, it'll turn off, cool. But I gotta be honest with you, if this light doesn't move for three minutes in the woods, 
It's probably because you're hurt. <laughs> you know, you're, you're calling someone for help. You're not worried about your bike light. Whoa. Woo. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, so, again, not a feature that I find too applicable for a mountain biker. A cool feature, but um, nonetheless not one that I ever really would use for mountain biking. So, personally for me, I leave this in the standard mode, and um, we'll talk about that now. Now, when you're in standard mode, it's more of a traditional bike light. Okay, so let me go and turn this on over here. Okay, so right now, actually, let me make sure I'm in the right mode. So I'll hold. Let me show you what I'm doing here real quick. I'll turn that camera on. I want to make sure I'm in the standard mode. So I'm going to go and just hold these both down. And it was not. And I'll go here. It's blinking. Now it is in standard mode. And I will uh, hold both buttons down again. And it's green. I'm in standard mode. Okay, so the light will remember whatever uh, intensity or however you left the light before. So that, that, that's kind of cool. It'll, it won't just go to the highest or low. It's just it'll remember where you left off. So I'm going to hold the, the green button down now for a second. It's going to turn this thing on. Okay, so it's on. Now you've got those two lenses up on top. So if I double click this over here, you're going to see the double click. If I double click it, and I don't want to get it too much into the lens, but I'm going to double click. All right, I've got both lenses on right now. Kind of hard to tell there, but now I'm in, in the blink mode. Double clicked. Now it's only one lens, not both. Double click. It just moved over to the other lens. Double click. It's both lens. And now we'll go into blink mode. Let me turn this off now. I held down the button and it turned it off. Let's talk about lenses. The lenses are designed to give you clearly three options. It's, a, it's more of a pointed, you know, uh, pin spot, more of a, uh, a widespread, and then that, you know, one or the other, and then both of them is just pure light. Again, another feature that personally I really didn't use too much in the woods, and this is something I'd love to get your opinion on. Maybe you can put some comments down in the description. For me, I just have both on all the time because a lot of other lights do have this, this type of feature and I've never really used it on their lights either. Generally, I have everything on and I just either have it on, you know, super high or, or low. Um, but some people, I guess, maybe like to play around with the focal point and you want, you know, if it's a helmet light, you want it to be more pin spot. If you want it on the bars, you want it. Broad. I don't know. I'd love to have your thoughts on this. Personally, again, it's not a feature that I really use. doesn't mean the feature is bad on the light. It just means that it's not really one terribly applicable to me in the woods. So now with all this that's been said so far about features that I don't use, let's start talking about how I actually use this light. Because it's actually a very good light, and I do use it often. But let me explain to you how I like to use it. One of the features that I like very much about this light is that if you take a look, right, you've got an up and down arrow. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Most lights have one single button. And to use that light, you have to just keep clicking it and it'll cycle through the different brilliances. And then usually it goes like from low, medium, high, maybe one other brilliance, and then the blink mode. And then you go back to low again, which is really a pain in the, in, in, in it's a pain when you're in the woods. Cause what I do is I generally don't keep this in super bright mode all the time. In fact, the way I use this is I, I have it mounted to my, my helmet. Okay, we'll talk about mounting in a little while. And I'll usually ride with another Magic Shine light on the bars. This is a uh, Montier uh, 5000S. Um, and this is the, um, which light is this one again? I always forget the name. I don't want to screw it up on you guys. Uh, the MJ, the MJ906. Uh, the reason why I want to make sure I give you the right names is because they're actually very good lights. And I'll do another review with both these lights in it. Anyway, the point is, one of these is on the bar. This one's always on my helmet. That's how I use this. But I don't always have it on high, like burn, because I don't need it. We're going to talk about brilliance in, in just, just a moment. These lights are bright, so I don't have to have it on super bright. And if you have this and this together, you're, you're done. So 
I like to be able to kick it up to super bright if I need it because I'm going to go down a really steep section and I want to see everything. Okay, and then I want to go back down to low or lower so I can go, I can, I can just I'll turn this thing on over here real quick, right? So now let's get out of the blink mode. I could just go, you know, going, going down a little bit. Here I go, just regular riding. Let's save a little juice. Go up, it's going bright. Okay, down, up. Pretty cool. With most other lights, you have to cycle, cycle, cycle. And that's a pain. I mean, you, anyone that's used these lights before, you've got to be able to agree with me on this one. You click in, you forget what mode it is. Are you really in the highest mode? You click one more time, the thing starts blinking on you like, ah, oh, damn, i got to go to the beginning again. Click, 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 and you forget. It's really actually really annoying. Big benefit, I love having the, the, the high and low up and down buttons. This light is bright. In fact, all the Magic Shine lights are, are pretty bright. I even lent this one to a buddy of mine. Remember, Chris, you, you borrowed this? You wanted to say, how does it work? And you were like, damn, this thing's bright. Here's, here's my two cents on whether this is bright or not. I don't think it's bright as much as I feel it's accurate. This is a 2600, okay? So that's 2600 lumens. I, hopefully I got that right. Um, I feel that the Magic Shine lights are true to their spec. You go and find these lights for $25 that are 5,000 lumens. How, how, how can that work? It's, it's not. They're not. Okay? Or they might be in a small, small area of a fine little focused area on the trail. What the Magic Shine lights are, in my opinion, not only are they the true power, you really are getting, in this case, 2,600. Um, I think both of these are 5,000, okay? Um, yes, they're both 5,000. Not only are you getting the true spec, but you're getting it in a nice, wide, like dispersed angle, like you're getting plenty of light. Some of those real cheapo lights, they might give you 5,000 lumens, but it's like in this little pin spot, it's, it, the, the lens is all focused so that it beams that power down so you technically are getting 5,000 lumens in like uh, what the hell are you going to do with that on the trail so I feel that these lights are are it's not really bright they are bright but it's just because they're true you know they're, they're giving you what you're paying for and in that respect they just seem so much brighter than the other lights because the other lights I just don't think are really doing what they're supposed to do and you're not getting your money's worth so these lights, I feel, are much more accurate, and they, they do their job, and that's why I don't keep this in high burn. I'll float between high and medium throughout the night when I'm riding, and by doing that, I get a lot more time. They say you're supposed to get an hour and a half double light full burn. I'm leaning more towards a, a, a heavy hour, all right? And that's still pretty good, considering the amount of power this thing's pushing out. But if I bounce back and forth, which is really what I want, I'll be out there for the hour and a half, two hours. That's plenty of power for me to ride in a night light ride. You know, I mean, I'm only going to be out there so, so long. And if I went down even lower, I'd probably get two and a half to three hours. But I'd have to be more conscious of this, which again makes this button even more cool. So as far as how long the battery lasts... It's pretty close to what they say, but regardless of that, I don't use it that way anyway. I'm floating back and forth, and then I get plenty of, of, of juice because the light is just really so bright um, and, and accurate for what you're paying for out of the box. Just truly a really good light. So now it's time to talk about how I mount this light to, if I wanted to, my bike or how I mount it to my helmet. The light comes with, again, like I said, it's a Garmin style twist lock uh, adapter on the bottom. Uh, I'm half and half on that. Uh, it's actually not a bad adapter, but the problem is that it, it's, well, it's pretty specific. It's Garmin, and my action camera, which is what I use often too, is it doesn't use this, so it's kind of odd. It's like the odd man out. The kit comes with two ways of mounting it to your bike. It comes with 
Um, this handlebar, this handlebar mount, which I'm not thrilled with, I'll explain why in just a minute, okay? But it comes with this guy, and it comes with a GoPro adapter, which I do very much use. So the way I use this light is I don't mount it on my bars. The, uh, the GoPro adapter just goes in and spins like that, okay? So now I have the GoPro adapter on the bottom, and I do not use their helmet mount, okay? I don't, I don't use their helmet mount that has the, uh, the, uh, the Garmin adapter on it because that doesn't work for my GoPro cameras. I use a GoPro helmet one. I put this guy on, and then, of course, I, I put the screw on, and, and there you go. We're off to the races. That's how I use this light, um, and, and, and it works fine, okay? Let's talk about the other, the other mounts. If I do need to mount this to my bars, or the other uh, uh, Magic Shine lights also use the same adapter, I use this rubber uh, handlebar wrapper, okay? This thing I like a little bit better than the one that comes with it, because this guy is a bit more, I don't want to call it permanent, it's not going to stay on forever, but you have to screw it on and off, okay? The kit comes with a couple different size straps, okay? You can use these different size straps depending on the bars. And this kind of guy screws on. That's, that's, that's not bad, I guess, if you have, have one bike and you're not taking it on and off for a lot. I don't know. For me, I've got, you can, I've got a number of different bikes around here. So this guy goes around the bar. It has a little rubber, little thingy like that. And there you go. I can wrap it around the handlebar nicely. And the way this works is, as you would expect, you just put it in here like that and twist. And now this thing's on. I like this. This does not come with the kit. So when you buy the kit, again, it comes with their handlebar mount and the GoPro mount, uh, GoPro mount, you might want to look for a few of the other adapters. I really do recommend getting this one, okay? And um, I also bought the helmet one too, just to have it, to see how it worked. It's actually kind of cool. If you can see it, it actually tilts up. It's not a bad one. If I wasn't using action cameras, I'd have it on my helmet, which since I am, um, uh, there you go. I need to use the GoPro one because that's more of a standard mount for what I use. So that's how I mount it and how I use the light. So we covered a lot of things in this video. We started with uh, the look and the feel of the light, which is excellent, solid, good quality light, the, the controls, the lenses. Uh, we talked about a, a number of features that the light comes with, uh, some more applicable to commuting than for mountain biking. There's just a couple things I wanted to cover real quick. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, just a quick video clip that I took of this light outside where you're going to see it being in the different light mode. So let me go cut to that right now and, and show you that. Okay, this is low. That's one higher, one higher, and that, that's just crazy high. So a few other things that I wanted to make sure I also covered. Uh, it is IPX6 waterproof, so it does give you a pretty darn good amount of water resistance. So you can use this thing out in the rain, which might be mountain biking like that. Uh, one meter impact resistance, okay? So uh, I'm not saying you should go toss a thing on the floor and beat up on it, but if it falls, I can tell it's pretty solid the way I feel. Some of the accessories that I mentioned, uh, again, you might want to get the, the this particular mount for the helmet, okay? You might want to get this other rubber mount over here for the handlebars. This particular light does have an optional remote I'm not really in love with the remote that much. The reason why I don't like the remote is because the remote only has one button on it, okay? I thought this, this remote was going to come with the same controls that are on the top, the two buttons. So I was going to be able to go up and down, up and down, but you can't. So you're, you're fiddling with it and I don't know. Uh, you can get the remote if you want. It wasn't that expensive if you want to try it, but I'm really not going to say the best things about the remote. It does its job, but eh, whatever. There's another feature which once it is charged up, you can charge your phone or another device off of this, right? It's got the USB-C you know, also out. You know, if you wanted to plug this into something else, it's only going to last so long. It's got a small battery in it, enough to run the light, but you can charge things from it. Overall, I have very little complaints about the light. 
Okay, uh, as I mentioned a few times already, the features that I don't use for mountain biking don't make those features bad. They're just not applicable for the way I use the light. And I do use this light. This light does go on the top of this helmet. That's what I use when I go night riding. This light on this helmet, and I use one of my other Magic Shine lights on the bars. And I have so much light, it's just ridiculous. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up this review. I really hope you liked it. If you got any questions, put them down below in the description. Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Keep the party on the pedals, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next video.